almost on every street in most towns and cities across Nigeria, one can find POS agents in small kiosks, shops, and sometimes under umbrella shelters, armed with POS machines and smartphones, making cash withdrawal transfers, bill payments, and other kinds of financial services available to people. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic further popularized the activities of these mobile money agents as big financial service providers adopted the concept, creating several partners and agents across the country who run outlets where people can walk in and carry out most of their financial transactions at a small fee. We will focus on key issues concerning operations, regulations and more on the show. Welcome to Business Insights. I am Justin Akadonye. Welcome back. First off, the Committee on Public Account has prayed the House of Representatives to issue warrant of arrest on Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emifili, the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mele Kiari, the sole administrator of the Niger Delta Development Commission, F. Young Aqua, and the Chairman of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, Elias Mbam, and five orders. But well, that's just one story I'm making run. Let's uh, take a roundup of all the stories in the world of business this week. Stay with us. Oil prices rose on Wednesday, extending gains from the previous sections as improved. Risk appetite provided support despite data showing an unexpected rise in U.S. oil inventories last week and a weaker demand outlook due to rising COVID-19 infections. Brent crude against which Nigeria's crude is priced rose by $2.99 to $72.34 per barrel at 7.20 p.m. Nigerian time, having hit a session low of $68.63 per barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures rose by $3.17 to $70.37 a barrel after falling to $66.44 per barrel earlier on Wednesday. Power generation in Nigeria dropped below the 4,000 megawatts mark on Tuesday amid the Idil Kabir celebration. The total generation in the country stood at 3,958.7 megawatts as of 6 a.m. on Tuesday, down from 4,270.7 megawatts on Monday, according to data obtained from the Nigerian Electricity System Operator. On Monday, the peak generation stood at 4,611 megawatts, while the lowest generation was 3,732.1 megawatts, the Nesso data showed. The total energy generated on Monday was 100,974.45 megawatts, out of which 99,272.98 megawatts was sent out. The gross monthly distribution by the Federal Account Allocation Committee, FAAC, to the three tiers of government and public agencies amounted to 733 billion naira, which is USD 1.78 billion in July from June revenue. This was an increase of 127 billion naira on the previous payout. Petroleum profits tax, companies, income tax, import and excise duty, and oil and gas royalties recorded substantial increases over the previous month while receipt from VAT was significantly lower. State governments receive a total of 143 billion naira, including 51 billion naira, representing the 13% derivation for the few oil-producing states. 13% derivation for the few oil-producing states. The Senate has called 
for the sanction of officials in the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation who made Nigeria lose 274 points. $2 million, which is about 54.1 billion naira on external loans. The upper chamber approved the report of the Senate Committee on Public Accounts before proceeding on annual vacation last week. The Senate, in its resolution, asked the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idri, to identify the officers and sanction them for mismanaging public funds in accordance with Rule 3115 of the Financial Regulations and for gross misconduct. Rule 3115 of the Financial Regulations reads, An accounting officer who is queried for his failure to manage or spend public funds effectively or who spends public money without due regard to economy, contrary to financial regulations 415, and fails to reply to the query, shall be removed from the shadow and be disciplined in accordance with the public service rules. The President, Major General Muhammad Buhari, retired as confirmed determination of the appointment of the embattled managing director of the Nigerian Ports Authority, Hadiza Bala Usman. Buhari disclosed this on July 12th in an affidavit filed at the Federal High Court Lagos in a suit brought against him by the Chief Executive Officer of Maritime Media Limited, Asubex, and two others. The affidavit, which was filed as Buhari's preliminary objection to the suit, was signed by Agan Tabitha of the Civil Litigation Department of the Federal Ministry of Justice at Pujar on behalf of Buhari's counsel. Welcome back. Those were some of the stories that trended in the world of business this week. Now, the emergence of mobile money operators in Nigeria has simplified the everyday financial life of an average citizen who can simply walk into any of these centers to perform a wide array of transactions previously restricted to banking halls. Now, stakeholders in the telecommunications sector have disagreed with the Central Bank of Nigeria on its new regulatory framework for mobile money services in Nigeria. They said that mobile money services should be driven by telecoms companies as against what is prescribed by the CBN. Well, joining us today is the National Treasurer of Amban, Olu Babs Aziz. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being on here. All right, let's talk about um, the emergence of a mobile money operation in Nigeria. It seemed to have gained traction during the COVID-19 pandemic and this, almost every street you go, you just find the presence of, uh, you know, kiosk, umbrellas and uh, shops where these operations go through. Is it an, an all-commerce affair? Uh, well, you see, uh, when we have something that uh, is an uh, emerging industry, you know, mobile money is an emerging um, trend in the whole world. So, and Nigeria have not really embraced it. We, we are still lacking and lagging behind, but uh, the regulator are really putting things in place to make sure that uh, Nigeria really embraces financial inclusion. Uh, that's why during the uh, pandemic, you have seen uh, agents out there in uh, news and corners of the, of the state, uh, just because the, fi the financial uh, institutions are not open for service and people need to carry out some kind of financial uh, services. So, and the agents are there, most are the last mile, so to render such services. So that's why you see not that they are just emerging, but these have just brought them to the limelight. And for people to get more aware that, oh, there is what we call agent banking, mobile money uh, or uh, operation going out there. Okay, you said Nigeria has not actually gotten to the extent that it should be uh, getting. You know, one would actually say that uh, things have changed over the past five years. Ordinarily, I can't remember the last time I went to the banking hall, you know, to, to make withdrawals or to do some uh, transfers when I can actually just do from the comfort of my mobile phone. Or if I uh, don't have access to my phone, I could just uh, easily walk into one of these, uh, you know, kiosks and do transfers, you know, withdrawals and even, you know, make payments for other financial services. So if you say Nigeria has not really gotten there, where are we right now and where should we be going? 
Yeah, if you, if, you, if you consider the Nigeria population, we have about all, all about 200 million. So uh, if you look at the number of agents we have out there and the operators, you know that we've not really gotten there. And also, we, we don't really have much uh, uh, financial services, like product and services on the mobile money platform as such. So to really uh, uh, embrace financial inclusion. You know, when you talk about financial inclusion, just trying to bridge the gap between the, those in the last mile and those in the city so that they can have access to bouquet of financial products and services via their phone. Mm. Okay, but looking at it right now, one would say that the average uh, mobile money agent or the operator is seemingly taking the place of the average bank. Do you agree? Uh, well, since we have, we have bank-led operators, we have a, a, a non-bank-led operators, and the telcos also are now coming telcos. We have telcos-led operators, the telecoms. You, you, you agree with me that it's, it's much more convenient for banks to run because banks cannot be everywhere. They can't penetrate into everywhere. Like the last mile, you know, the cost of erecting a, a mobile a, a, a ATM machine, the cost of erecting it, the maintenance as well. So it has a long way to go. But the, the, let, let assume they are going to incur about, let's say, one point something million on erecting a, 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 POS, a, a POS machine. Mm. Where people can, a ATM machine, where people can withdraw at a particular location. They now look at it, okay, instead of incurring such amount of money, and that will only serve those people within that community. If such amount could be invest in agent banking, whereby give agents terminals and those terminals will go to the news and crannies of the of the of, of, of the community mm. so it's it's go further and it's got to the last mile than just having this uh atm a machine at a particular location mm. are you getting it because yes, when i'm talking about we want people out there to have access to various products and financial products and services and erecting atm machine could not really do that but we need the agents all right. Okay, talking about um, um, these agents right now, how do you ensure regulation and to ensure that, uh, you know, it's not just an all-commerce affair that I said um, in the start, so at least there'll be some sort of control and there'll be some sort of checks. I know there's an association, you have um, this Amban. So what exactly, what role does Amban play in all of this? Yeah, good. You see, Amban was being incorporated for far back 2015, and we have been incorporated to see how best we can facilitate, organize, and speed up the agents, the operators, and the regulators. Okay, let's go on. Before you go further, so okay. we'll just get a bit of clarity so our audience can actually follow. You mentioned agents, operators, operators and regulators. Can yes. you break it down? Who are the agents? Who are the operators? And of course, the regulator should be the CBN or FinTech. Exactly. So just explain. So that. agents are the common man you have seen out there on, on the street. Uh, promoting or projecting the image of the bank or mobile money operators. Mm -hmm. Those are the agents. Those are the ones you are seeing with uh, kiosks, uh, with POS and stuff. Those are the agents. Then, the, the operators are the licensed mobile money operators, either bank-led or non-bank-led or telco-led. You so mentioned in several names. So you have to break it down. Bank-led now, telco-led and non-bank-led. So yeah. break those three down. Okay. The, the, the non-bank-led are the likes of uh, OP, Paga, Paga okay, and, the, uh, and okay. the likes. Okay. Are you getting it? Then the bank led, we have uh, First Money, we have Stambik. Those IBTC. ones are under various commercial banks. Exactly. So okay. those are the bank led. Then the Tecos led, we have this uh, 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 memo from the from MTN. Okay, Momo and all the of that. Momo from MTN. Then we have also from Etisalat and also from... A okay, the network Nine service Mobile. providers then have those, their those own yeah. operations as well. Yeah. Okay, we now have... Okay, let's talk about regulation right now. So, you mentioned the bank-led, non-bank-led and telco-led. So, are those regulators? Yeah, they have been... The, the regulatory framework is from the from the CBN. So, okay. CBN regulates... No, this is an ecosystem. Okay. So, when you're talking of uh, mobile money, agent banking... Is an ecosystem that has to uh, route through the CBN, the names, the techos, because you can't do it with techos. Mm. Because all you are doing, you are doing from your phone. Forget about the POS. Mm. Are you getting it? Yeah. And the bank also, most of these op uh, operators, 
they, they have a, 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 an account to in a particular bank. Okay. They have their domicile bank where all those transactions route through. Okay. And also the NIPSIN. So NIPSIN and the CBN are the major regulators in this industry. Okay, so basically now for your association, which is Amban, you regulate just uh, the agents. Yeah, the, what what Amban does, as I as I, I explained earlier, that okay, what we are trying to do to facilitate and also to organize and speed up speed up the 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 the, uh, the efforts mm. of the CBN towards financial, financial inclusion. inclusion. Okay, so then then Amban also uh, represents the interests. Of their members through uh, through collaboration, through synergy, interaction on matters related to financial inclusion. Okay. So, and our our major focus we, we focus on uh, 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 agent banking, mobile money, fraud and security, then advocacy and awareness. Okay, tell us about some of your success stories so far. Have you been able to ensure some sort of sanity? You know, uh, you know, financial inclusion is relatively uh, still new in Nigeria, and we are not gotten to the level that we should get. So, tell us some of the things that have happened and um, how Amban has been able to ensure sanity in the system. Yeah, and uh, sincerely, when you talk about financial inclusion in Nigeria, uh, you can't do without Amban. Okay. Because all this survey being carried out by various organizations, operators, are being done through our platform. So they come to us because we are the ones that interface with the last mile. Mm. So they are just an operator. So we interface with the last mile. So they come to us for, the, for, for all these questions. And then we tell them this is what they need to do. And based on that, they formulate their policy. So in, invariably, now, Amban is actually like the go uh, between, uh, you know, the last users and, of course, uh, uh, operators and agents. Yeah. But just for uh, the sake of understanding, for people who uh, would really want to get into some sort of a maybe agency banking or uh, mobile money um, operation, is it something that... Uh, uh, Will still be lucrative in the next five, ten years? Is it the future of uh, you know financial services, not just in like, maybe globally? Yeah, yes, because a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a, a financial products and services are still coming. Are you getting it? Because what we have out there now, we, we have just a Kiko, just cash in, cash out, deposit or withdrawal, mm. then bill, bill payment. But there are some other services that. When we are talking about financial inclusion, that will make people to feel that, feel the impact. Can you mention yeah. some of these services that you're talking about? Okay, good. Like the other time, uh, okay, let me mention of a particular operator like OP, for instance. You know, we have something like O Ride. Right. Are you getting it? Whereby I want to make a ride, use your application. Okay, so it goes beyond just uh, so transacting. It's, 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 you can go it's, for it's, payment yeah, of other yeah, services. So we are talking about people having access to bouquet of financial products and services. Mm. So that we are talking about financial inclusion. It just will bridge the gap between those at the last one so that they can also have access to it. Okay. Are you getting it? And so that's why we have mobile money and agent banking. As we all know that agent banking is just like someone representing or projecting the image of the bank out there, the doing what bank. the bank are doing. Yes. And what the majority of people understand about do the bank are, are, are into deposits, withdrawal, and transfers. also transfers, things like that. Mm. They, but Agents are only limited to that. Okay. You know, you cannot do uh, 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 a, a, a lending okay. as an agent. Oh. But as time goes on, these are the services we have on the platform. Okay. And even some operators now, they have it on their platform. Okay, so operators, they even go beyond just the regular transfers, uh, making payments and collections. Yeah, they also do, uh, you know, loan services and, of course, uh, maybe savings, savings as savings. well. Yeah, savings. That, that's when you're talking about financial inclusion. Mm. You shouldn't restrict it to just savings and withdrawal. No, that's not financial inclusion. Okay, so then again, you know, for for the sake of those who are really very interested and just may want to get into this, you know, what exactly do you need? I just want you to give us some sort of um, advice now to start starters, uh, a young man who just uh, left school and uh, has not got a job and feels that uh, he should uh, be independent and do something for himself. What do you need on the average to be a mobile agent or money agent or an operator? Well, uh, if I'm to share with you... Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's beyond what you are seeing out there. Okay. All those people just there with umbrella, we call them accidental agents. Accidental agents. Yeah. Why accidental? Good. 
because they don't go through the proper channel. They might just acquire POS from their banks. You know, all this, uh, 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 what they call it, the, the, the bank uh, sales person, the marketers, mm. they go out there, they're on target. Okay, so they're you just target. go out and... They just go and give out... Their but, POS uh, machines yeah, and all, but or terminals rather. That, that is what we and I was saying, we are trying to achieve. We want to, we want to come on board as an institution that anybody coming to this industry have to be tutored. Mm. We have to give them orientation. It is beyond what you are looking out there. Okay. And I, I, I must commend what Lagos states have just done, the uh, Lagos State Empowerment Trust Fund. All right. Uh, most, mem most of our members facilitate for this project they are doing now. They are trying to see how they can empower people on this industry, agency banking. So there is a syllabus for it. We train them for a whole week, is it a whole week or two weeks. Different facilitators. So those are the process. It's not just you having a POS. No, it's beyond that. It's a business. It's supposed to be an institution on its own. Mm. Like we have our insurance of bankers. We have this uh, insurance as well. So we are now working towards having such in the industry. And that's what Amber, sanity. Yes, sanity. That's what Amber is trying to do. All right, fine. So basically now, you, you, although you, you answered part of my, of my question, uh, I just wanted you to, because each time on the show, we try to give advice you know, for startups and those uh, who really want to get insights on how you know, to start some sort of business. What should they really be doing? What's the right thing to do? Well, for anybody that wants to start, should identify, uh, should be uh, first identify with a reliable operator, mm. And also, because oper the operator, when, when we started, far back 2012, mm -hmm. we have been trained. But now, no training. Okay. And that's why we are having a series of issues out there with agents that they can't control. But with our session, we don't have such. Okay. Because we train ourselves. We have a, 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 this conference every year. Okay, to ensure training and retraining of members. Yes. So that so way it's sanity can be ensured. training short. people about yeah. the industry. All right. So invariably what you're saying as we wrap up now is that uh, once there are identified uh, you know, agents, there should be training and that retraining training, yeah. so they can actually understand, understand the terms yeah. and of course exactly. the future of the industry. All right, thank you so much. We have been speaking with uh, the National Treasurer of Amban, Olowo Babs Aziz. Many thanks for joining us to look at the issue of um, financial Very inclusion well. in Nigeria. Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate that. All right. It is still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I trust you have actually gotten one or two tips on how to be a mobile uh, money agent and, of course, maybe an operator. But then we'll leave you with useful insight on how to write an informal proposal. That's the size of the show. I am Justin Akadunye. Let's do it again next week. Bye for now. Writing an informal proposal. The thought of writing a proposal overwhelms many people, but the task does not have to be daunting. Informal proposals are written when people need to ask permission to make a purchase, undertake a project, or write a paper. This type of proposal is a way of persuasively putting forth an idea and asking for action to be taken on that idea. When writing a proposal, consider who will read the proposal and what that person may or may not already know about what you are proposing. Follow these steps when writing a proposal. 1. State your purpose. Do this clearly and concisely so that the reader knows immediately why you are writing. Two. Give some background information. Explain why you are proposing your suggestion so that the reader has a better understanding of the problem. 3. State a solution to the problem. This is where you give specifics about your suggestion. 4. Show costs. Lay out any costs that will be involved. 5. Conclusion. Wrap it up by restating the problem and the proposed solution.